Okay, then I will talk and we will get going here and I will say hello everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman here as always with Tom Orr. Tom, how is it going? It's going okay. I am greatly enjoying your Twitter back, your, uh, your Zoom background right now. Once again, we're, we're taking the famously uh, visual medium of podcasting and making it an extremely <laughs> visual conversation. But uh, your, your background is a, a place that is near and dear to my heart. My wife is from Toledo. So uh, every time we're up in Toledo, it is a place that we always end up. Tony, what is, what is behind you right now? Oh, you must be referring to, um, you might be mistaken, Tom. You might be referring to Tony Paco's who has hot dogs, hot dog buns on the wall signed. Um, these, this is actually my wall. Uh, whenever I have guests over, I have them sign hot dog buns. Just as on the last show, you had your own accomplishments on the wall. Mm-hmm. I here have my accomplishments on the wall. Uh, I believe this is yes. Sinbad right mm-hmm. here. Jordan, Jordan Fuller's uncle, Sinbad, has a signed he bun up there. So by. He, I'm yeah, like, uh, Sinbad, while you're here, I have hot dog buns. <laughs> Would you sign one? Of course he did. Uh, Bob Eubanks, I believe, right here, host of the Newlywed Game, everybody's favorite. And so he stopped by. It was just he had asking for directions on how to get to uh, Solid Gold. And then I, you know, I why, like, why I would know. he? Why would he assume that you would know that? That's yeah. the real question. Yeah. Then he said, "I'm I'm just here to ask for directions on how to get away from here." <laughs> uh, up here, I believe Doc Severinsen, I believe. Uh, that was a point. Tonight Show band leader of some renown, I believe. I think. As recently as 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yes, Doc is always great to have over when you know, we're having a dinner party or something. Or like if I'm talking to my wife and I want to change the subject, I'll point at him. and He'll play some music. And then I can like if we're having a discussion I don't want to have, I'll point at him. He'll play some music and we'll change the subject. So he's always great fun to have around. This one... There's a lot of writing, but it doesn't really say anything. So I'm going to assume it's Kevin Warren, but I don't remember him ever being in my house. Well, and it also says all the best and not you can't play. Sorry. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> because reasons, Kevin Warren. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a great segue, Tom, as this show we can just dedicate to Big Ten Commissioner Kevin Warren and his open letter, timely, only, what, eight days after... Mm-hmm. He handed down the decision to cancel the big, uh, postpone the Big Ten mm-hmm. season. We don't say the C word around here, cancellation. <laughs> we don't say that. Uh, did you see his interview with John Arand uh, from the Sports Business Journal? When he, uh-huh. when John was like, yeah, you've, the, he said canceling the season. He's like, ah, no, it's postponed. So it's good to know that voters in the CFP will all have to wait until the Big Ten and the Pac-12 play in a winter before we can continue the playoffs. So it's good that everybody has the, – the, the season has been postponed for the Big Ten, but they will be able to be part of the playoffs. Is that maybe, Tom, now? Sure, absolutely. Of course they will. This is, this is all how this is going to go work. This is all, all how it's going to go work. They didn't cancel the fall 2020 football season. They just postponed it because even in January or April – or next fall, it will still be the fall 2020 football season in our heart. Because what is, what is autumn if not a state of mind? We're, we're, we're going to get real philosophical here because if you try and think rationally, none of this crap makes any sense. So we're going to have to be a little philosophical today. So uh, get your, uh, you know, all you, all you Starbucks uh, baristas, um, think back to your college days and, and uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to be right in, your, right in your wheelhouse today. I love it. Uh, what I wanted to do, because I have just grabbed some random paragraphs, almost every paragraph from Kevin Warren's open letter that was, again, timely, uh, released two days before Big Ten parents are set to descend upon a place that he won't be. But that's, you know, that's neither here nor there, just like him. <laughs> neither here nor there. He's off on his own. Uh, the first thing that I want to address is, the vote by the Big Ten Council of Presidents and Chancellors was overwhelmingly in support of postponing fall sports and will not be revisited. This is something we talked about a little bit on the morning show on Thursday. The idea that the, like Ohio State was in favor of postponing as opposed to cancellation. But 
they weren't in favor of doing this right now. And I'm, I'm wondering like how many other programs were in that same boat that, yeah, we, we think we need more time, but we don't want to cancel. And then it, they just get all grouped in and it allows Warren to say the, the vote, which apparently did happen, even though some people say it didn't, other people say it did. It was in support of the postponing of fall sports, but that's not even what he has to defend now. It's the cancellation of fall sports when that's not like, that's not what the vote was about, or that's not what he's talking about here because the vote to cancel, right? Ohio State wasn't in favor of that. Other schools weren't in favor of that. What does overwhelming and support mean? And Tom, as we know, he won't give us any numbers because as state uh, universities, these people do not have to be open and honest with us. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Yes. You just get to cash a big check and not be accountable to anyone. That seems like how that, how that's all playing out right now. I, I absolutely love the rebranding here. I haven't stolen your car. I have merely borrowed your car without your permission and with an uncertain return date. How, why, you know, I mean, what, how, how could you accuse me of stealing your car? I very clearly have told you exactly what I'm doing. It, it just, everything about this, there's, there's so many statements and, and, and uh, you know, tweets. It's just, the, the, it, you read all of them and it's like, this was crafted very carefully to say just enough to give you the sense that you're getting an answer, but not actually be getting an answer. So if the vote was overwhelmingly in support of postponing fall sports, does Ohio State get lumped in with that group? Because they were in favor of postponing for a month. So does that mean that they get lumped in with the same group that was in favor of postponing till question mark, question mark, question mark, 2021 question mark? Or was that a separate group? And the steadfast refusal to provide any kind of specifics for these 13 to 14 public employees who are getting paid a crap load of money to do this particular job is just, I mean, a, just staggeringly out of touch with how the world is supposed to work. I mean, if, if the president, let's just throw something out. If the president of Rutgers felt it was unsafe to play football this fall, that's fine. The president of Rutgers is getting paid a boatload of money to put his or her name behind their decisions. That's what it, that's how this works. If you want to be unaccountable, that's fine. Don't be a public university president. Sorry, that ain't how it works. And yeah. the fact the fact that they are so steadfastly refusing to provide any specifics on any of this tells me they don't necessarily think this is going to go over real well. And this is not going to be, this is not going to be well received. And if this doesn't go well, if this, if the SEC and ACC and big 12 are end, able to end up playing and play safely this fall, who boy, do people not want their names associated with that mess? Well, yeah. And then they just push it all onto Kevin Warren, the scapegoat here. Not quite, but they, these people, these presidents, they should all have to answer which way they voted. If they, if there was a vote or whatever, which way were you okay with going? And that way we've all FOIA'd everything. Like there's umpteen different people coming out and, and FOIAing everything, Freedom of Information Act, trying to get answers. Northwestern being a private institution, not subject to the same uh, uh, que quests for answers. So, I, I don't have a lot of faith that um, we'll get those answers. Like through those means, they would have to come out and just say, yeah, this is, this is the way we wanted to do it. They, then they should have to, they answer to the people. And the, the fact that you've got players and parents just wanting transparency and well, this letter says a whole bunch of nothing. And, in an interview with Nicole R back of the athletic, he's not, Kevin Warren isn't really interested in getting, I mean, he said, she said about who voted what. And that's all a bunch of crap because this is a, uh, this is a, you're bringing in hundreds of million dollars a year. You are reliant upon the public to purchase your product, to view your product, the, the students that you answer to, the people that you answer to, and you can't live in secrecy when you take something like this away, that's, God, it might be even illegal. Mm. 
that's that that doesn't seem possible, right? That's not that's not that university presidents can't break the law. That's not that's not how this works. Come on, yeah, I, 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 it's just the stuff that they are refusing to do and the answers they're refusing to provide. Just, I don't know who they think this is helping, but it ain't them. It is not the Big Ten has not done itself any favors in the last nine days now since they announced this decision. It, this has been mismanaged so, so terribly from the absolute jump. And, you know, you see, you see Kevin Warren going on, you mentioned that sports business daily TV interview yesterday. And he was asked once again, point blank, like, so what was the decision to cancel based on? It was just, Oh, well, you know, and then this sort of trails off into a bunch of, uh, you know, it's, it's like when you ask Mike Leach a question about something and he ends up talking about pirates. It was just like, what, how did we end up on the Care Bears? What are we, what are we doing here, gang? Like, come on. Yeah, it, it's just, I, I, there, there are still questions that I had five minutes after the decision was made nine days ago that there have been multiple attempts to answer those questions, it seems, and none of them have been successful. Like, and it's not, I'm being, you know, I don't care for your answer. It's, that's not an answer. That's not, that's not answering the question. So, if you want people to feel like, hey, no, 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 these people are being straightforward. This is what they genuinely believe. They have nothing to hide. A great way to start uh, building that trust would be to stop acting like you have so much to hide. I, that's good advice, Tom. I'm probably falling on deaf ears as it relates to the Big Ten and the powers that be. Now, getting to those reasons why we can, we'll, we'll get there. Um, first, I, I want to bring the next point up from this letter that he wrote which I believe he probably just Googled like latest numbers, COVID-19, because then one of his paragraphs is, you know, as you are well aware, we are facing a complicated global pandemic and goes through the numbers and this and that, and, you know, resulting in more than 170,000 deaths with more than 22 million confirmed cases and 780,000 lives lost around the world. Trying, you know, attempting to put out there, like, you guys are crazy for wanting to play football through this. And then goes on to, you know, delve into the reasons why. But it's it's kind of just a smack in the face to the people. And, and there's there's more smacks and down down below. Not smacks down below, but down, you know, on this rundown that we will get to. <laughs> um, but it's it's one of those things where it's you know, the condescension kind of comes in at this point where it's like, you know, well, you know, we are dealing with a pandemic. Yes, everybody <laughs> knows that. And because we've all, you know, nobody here has not been dealing with it and you don't need to remind us of that. And he throws some numbers out, but then, then he goes to the, the, at the core of our decision was the knowledge that there's just too much medical uncertainty and too many unknown health risks regarding the SARS COVID-2 infection and its impact on our student athletes. So they basically have all of these medical experts and, and whatever. And basically the, the unknowns were why they couldn't go forward with football because ah, you just don't know. Now what they have done is put down uh, protocols to manage these unknowns, which Tom have been uh, pretty well managed because we get test results, not from Ohio state, but from other schools around the big 10, letting them know, letting everybody know, this is how many people have been tested. This is how many uh, positives we've had. So those are knowns, and we've gotten knowns throughout the, the last two months. But when the Big Ten gets all of that information, it, it's pretty much just thrown into trash because it's like, well, yeah, but what if, you know, unknowns? Right, yes, you have historical data, but what about the data in the future? That's an unknown. Therefore, we must cancel it's this is this gets to one of the questions that i had from moment number 1 and even before they announced it this has been something that i've been kind of asking pretty openly on twitter for several months now so if it's not safe for 85 people in something of a bubble who are tested multiple times a week to participate in uh something where they're going to be around other people uh how is it safe to bring 30,000 people who are not going to be tested regularly uh, back to a place where they're going to be around other people and uh, the answer to that is, um, you know, it's the uh, the old Simpsons, like, uh, 
you know, the dog has pulled the plug out of the uh, cord, you know, oh, sorry, technical difficulties, we can't answer that question. These are the same university presidents making the decision to pull the plug on football, but let's bring 30,000 students back on campus. It's going to be fine. This is fine. And, and in, the, in the penalty, uh, the paragraph right below the, uh, the primary factors, financial considerations did not influence the decision as the postponement will have enormous adverse financial implications. Gerd, do you think financial considerations may have influenced the decision to bring back 30,000 students, even though they, it's unsafe to have 85 of them playing football at a time? Do you, think, do you think there may have been financial considerations there? Perhaps. Perhaps they did want uh, the, the in-person tuition checks. Wh who's to say, really? Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and maybe that's just a cynic in us uh, knowing full well that they would get those checks and then we would start to see campuses drop off uh, in terms of in-person classes almost immediately after. So, yes, that was, I mean... And we'll get into even like the, the next point with the uh, where Kevin Warren begins to bullet point the reasons. It, it goes right into your point, Tom, because as he says here, transmission rates continue to rise at an alarming rate with little indication from medical experts that our campuses, communities, or country could gain control of the spread of the virus prior to the start of the comp prior to the start of competition. So if you're experts, your medical experts aren't sure that campuses can gain control of the spread of the virus. Why then are you bringing the virus to campus with all of the, the, the as you said, the 30,000 students? Why is it safe to bring those people? But it's, yeah, we're just not sure. Like, and I wrote about this like last week, something about like football in a zombie apocalypse. They're basically opening up campuses to the zombies. If they would just keep the zombies out, you can play football. Why are, you, why are you bringing the zombies in when you've got layers upon layers of protection from the zombies? They're, you know, they're just walking around out, out of the camp, out campus, outside of campus, you know. Just, they can't get in because they don't know how to use doors. And then you just throw open the doors and let the, the zombies in, and you're like, too safe. You, can't, you can't play football in a zombie apocalypse. There's too many zombies. Look at all these zombies. And so that's what they've done. They've brought, they've allowed the zombies. They're getting the zombies, you know, tuition checks. And then after they realize, you know what, this is a bad idea. Um, how do we get rid of the zombies? And somebody else goes like, wolves, let's bring in wolves. And then eventually, how do we get rid of the wolves? And you're like, elephants? I don't know. And so now your campus is overrun with zombies, wolves, and elephants. And you definitely cannot play football in that. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds pretty dangerous. You know what? In that circumstance, I would actually be, if there were wild wolves running all across the Ohio State campus, I would be in favor of canceling the football season. That's, I, 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 they would have me there for sure. Um, yeah, I, the, the paradox that people are facing is it would be safe to play football if you didn't have students on campus. But you can't play football from a visual perspective, just from a, a, uh, just a PR perspective, it's hard to say, well, these are just students who happen to play football. And so, but they're just regular old students, which is the central grift of the amateurism and student athlete model. And so you, you could do it if there were no students there, but then it's real hard to say, well, they're just students if none of the other students are there and they're there. This is, and, and this is, I think you're starting to see the, some of the ACC schools kind of get past this, like, all right, like, North Carolina has shut down in-person classes, still, still practicing football. You're seeing schools that are willing to just kind of, you know, admit the thing that we've all known for years, decades, multiple decades. Like, yes, these are not actually just regular old students, which is why you get paid $50 million to put them on TV every year. Like, okay, can, can we now admit the extremely obvious thing, even if that might be harmful to the NCAA long-term? Like, Let's just admit the thing that is the very, very obvious conclusion to all of this, and then we can actually solve the problem. But, you know, there, there are people who are interested in still pretending that this is, that this is, you know, no, 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 this is, this is still 1948. And uh, after, uh, after the game, they're going to go down to the, to the uh, milk, to the uh, drugstore and get a malted with their best girl. And then uh, next week we shall play Iowa pre-flight and it shall be grand. And get, guess what? Tickets cost like a quarterback then. 
and games weren't on TV and athletic departments are not making a hundred million dollars a year. Okay. Things have changed a little bit. Let's stop pretending we're still 1948 and we're going down to the, to the, uh, to the drugstore to get a malted with our best girl. Let's continue this pretending thing. Notre Dame has suspended in-person classes for two weeks. I think they did not practice yesterday. Is there any way people are saying, well, if there's no students on campus at Notre Dame, there's going to be no football. Mm -hmm. I'll Mm -hmm. believe that one when I see it. I'll believe that anywhere when I see it in terms of the the people still playing right now that you're going forward with football and then, oh, no, students have gone home, so we can't do football. Not even – I'll believe that when I see it because I don't expect Notre Dame to – you know, suddenly cancel football when they have been making more money from this sport than anybody else over the last 30 years. I mean, they were the first with the, the national contract for themselves with NBC paying them millions every year. So there's, they're as tied into the whole charade as anybody. And yeah, they, they love to talk about their recruiting uh, difficulties and their stringent academic requirements. They're still a football program you know, more than anything else. That's what they're known for. That's more, maybe more than any other university that, you know, that that's what they're known for is, is football. So yeah, I'll be shocked in two weeks if they're like, you know what, we're just not going to do the football. I wouldn't be shocked if everybody does that, but if Notre Dame is the only one mm-hmm. who's like, you know, we're going to bow out students, you know, we can't get them back on campus. So it's, we're just not going to do this. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I still think there's a decent possibility everyone ends up scrapping it because, I mean, again, a lot of this is PR stuff. And, you know, are, is everyone going to be willing to just keep kids and keep the teams in a bubble and you test a couple of weeks? I think you could do that and you could do it relatively safely and you can play your games. Is everyone going to be willing to do that? So far, the answer is yes. They haven't, you know, completely crossed the Rubicon there yet, but th- that's coming at some point. And, you know, are, how, how do all these schools do? I mean, we have seen some early returns from schools like Notre Dame, North Carolina, Michigan State, where it's like, nope, this is, this is bad. We're going to go online only pretty much immediately. Does that happen everywhere? I mean, my, my guess is that it happens everywhere. And if you're holding the general student body to anything close to the standard of the football program in terms of what's acceptable and what's not, you know, acceptable risk, then yeah, I mean, if it, if you're holding the foot, the general student body to anything close to what the football team standard is, then yeah, you should, you should be shutting everything down immediately right now. And really, if you're holding them to the standard of the football team, they never should have come back in the first place. So, and you knew probably in June that they should never have come back in the first place. So, I mean, obviously, obviously these are different standards here and you know, the, the really lazy, stupid argument is, well, are you saying that academics are not more important than football? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. That is what I'm saying. I, I've gotten that on Twitter a couple of times and it's just like, okay, this is, this is you having decided your, your opinion here and dug in and decided, well, I'm not wrong. So you must be wrong. And it's because you think that football is the most important thing in the world. No, football is not actually the most important thing in the world. But if you have three functioning brain cells that can bounce off of each other, you can also figure out that 30,000 students coming back to Ohio State where sometimes students have parties and go to bars and do things that might expose them to high and heightened risk of COVID. Like, duh, no kidding. So we're, we're just, you know, this is, this is just, uh, I mean, there, there is an extreme double standard here that has worked against football. Um, and, you know, and obviously there's going to be questions of why, and there's a whole bunch of possible answers and, you know, do, how much do university presidents and boards of trustees really care about athletics versus academics and all that. And, and that's completely legitimate. There's also the amount of money. I mean, the Ohio state athletic department is a very sizable athletic department. One of, the, one of, if not the biggest in the country, the Ohio state university academically orders of magnitude, more money involved orders of magnitude. So that's just, you know, people will say, how can they, how can they possibly shut down football? That's too much money. It's like, well, multiply the number of students times the amount they're paying in tuition, the amount of room and board. It's way, 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 way. You've got, you've got extra zeros on that, on that athletic, athletic budget. So that's, that's gotta be, I mean, really, if we want to have the real honest conversation, 
that's the reason that for this all of all of this disconnect and and, and whoever says otherwise is just is just pretending right now I'm wondering, we've seen parties and stuff where outbreaks happen. How many people do you think, um, you're like, you know what, I, I don't want to go to classes this semester. Let's throw some parties. Let's, you know, g- have an outbreak. Let's have everybody sent home because I'd rather just do school from home. You know, don't have to go anywhere. Can just, uh, at my leisure, I don't even know if it's at your leisure. Probably not. You probably still have to be there on time. And I know some people don't like uh, the, the the classes uh, on the computer, but I'm guessing some, you know, maybe maybe there's some sabotage that will happen. People don't want to go to class and try to, it, it's the new pulling the fire alarm. It, it's throwing, <laughs> throwing big parties, trying to get people sick so that the campus is all, all shut down. And maybe maybe that's a way to keep your football program safe and healthy because now there's nobody there to get them sick. This is SEC line of thinking that I'm throwing out there. And that's why they are ahead of the game. And the big 10 is like, you know what? We're not even, we're not even going to jump into that pool. Let's just shut. And you know what? Let's not even put water in the pool, get the water out of the pool and let's cancel this thing because we don't want to do anything about nothing. Better fill it with concrete just in case. Don't want anyone to fall into that pool. That's right. That means we can't have fun. No, no, no. We haven't canceled your fun. We've just postponed it. Perfect. The uh, the next point from Kevin Warren. As our teams were ramping up for more intense practices, many of our medical staffs did not think the interventions we had planned would be adequate to decrease the potential spread, even with ve- very regular testing. <clears throat> so now he's throwing the old medical personnel under the bus, you know, the, the, the people who, who set up these protocols, like, yeah, we can do this. Ryan Day said they had no issues going to tackling. And I'm going to assume other programs felt the same way. Now, were other programs not as strenuous with testing as Ohio State? Maybe. And you know whose fault that is? The Big Ten for not, de- you know, demanding more from all the programs. So this is the Big Ten's fault here. This is the, the man in charge, Kevin Warren, for not organizing this and getting everybody on the same page where you have, uh, yeah, I'm sure the medical personnel in the Big Ten are like, you know what, they're, these people aren't doing it like these people. And if they were, then maybe it would be safer. But with, with six of the programs only testing, you know, every 10 days, or I'm just throwing out numbers, but we've seen some crazy numbers from the ACC about testing. And, and so who knows? I doubt everybody is doing two, two times a week like Ohio State. Are they not doing as much the entire effort that Ohio State has put into? I don't even know if the Big Ten was aware of who was doing what or to what levels. But since there is no one mandate thrown down by the Big Ten, yeah, there's going to be confusion. And so this is almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy because the Big Ten did not put down the proper plans to have these concerns addressed because again tom one person without covid tackling another person without covid as we've said does not create covid all right i think the interesting question here is what are the protocols that you would require in order to feel to satisfy your medical professionals that this would be safe what what are those protocols and are they reasonable are they are they things that can be accomplished within the budget of these programs because if you can then great do it but the Big Ten didn't lay that out. They didn't come around and like check with programs. Did anyone from the Big Ten office come and like come to Ohio State to watch practice? How, is, how are things going? Are they doing what they're supposed to be doing? Did they go to Rutgers and do that? Did they go to Illinois and do that? No, they did not do that. There was, there was just kind of this like abdication of responsibility. And now it's like, well, you're not doing enough. It's like, well, you, you didn't tell us what we needed to do. If you had told us what we needed to do, we would have done it. And if seven of the 14 programs can do it, great. Play a season with those seven teams. And if Rutgers can't do it, that's fine. You can sit out the season. If you're not comfortable, that's fine. Much as players can opt out of the season, schools can opt out of the season. That's fine. But this whole thing just, this goes back to the abdication of responsibility and how no one wants to be accountable for anything right now. The president, well, we can't tell you how the president's voted. If a football program, if a Rutgers or a Maryland can't do it, then 
Rutgers and Maryland looks real bad and that's going to kill them in recruiting for the foreseeable future. And I, I get the sense that in the same way that the big 10 has always been, you know, very equitable, we're all the same. Ohio state isn't, you know, Ohio state in the big 10 is not the same as Texas in the big 12. The same, you know, we've had this conversation before. I think that there are probably programs that could not play that through an absolute fit that at the, you know, if, if that was even broached, those programs would have thrown an absolute fit because that's not, no, one for, all for one and one for all. This is the Big Ten. And if, if the failure factory in Piscataway can't do it, then no one can do it. If Maryland can't do it, then no one can do it. I mean, it, there's just, there's a, it just, it just smacks of that. It, it, does that, I mean, am I, am I wrong? Does that seem like that's a completely fabricated thing? And let's just be clear, because we've got no actual answers, we don't know. That very well may have been. We don't know, but that seems that seems at least plausible to me. Like, if they had been able to do this and lay this all out, you could have you could have at least had the Ohio States and Penn States and Michigans and Nebraskas and Iowas play this year. But you know, I don't I don't think that was even presented as an option. No, and it reminds me of back in school where you can only move as fast as the the slowest learners. You know, in some classes. And that always frustrated me as a very talented learner and a very smart kid that, you know, really seventh grade and we're still doing arithmetic. I mean, come on, All right, let's, let's move on. Can we tomorrow, maybe subtraction, can we start learning that? So, but it's, it's similar to that. Like if the, if the slowest person can't keep up, then everybody has to go this, the speed of the slowest person. Where in, in life, the slow, slowest person gets eaten by the bear. And then you just move on as fast as you want. I think it's time to let the bear have Rutgers and Maryland, whomever else didn't want to do this. Let them be consumed by the bear. And then everybody just moves on. And Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, Nebraska, reform the Big Eight or something. But to be held back by... And I know we're we're just assuming Rutgers is terrible. I, I don't know why. <laughs> what basis would you have for that? But to have the the back of the train steering the front and, and holding everybody back. I mean, it's yes, the Big Ten is so aligned, and and look what it got you this year. It's it's a damnable thing if it's really like the noobs that cost everybody else this season. Kevin Warren's next point, which I, I also like. As the general student body comes back to campus, spread to student athletes could reintroduce infection into our athletics community. Now, these words here mean, <laughs> to, to when you say reintroduce infection, it means that there is currently no infection. So if there's currently no infection, why not have sports? And why bring these zombies to campus to infect sports? You care about your student athletes. You are spending so much money to keep them safe. Why do you bring the zombies in? It's Where's the common sense? You know what this campus is missing? Zombies. No, that's not what it's missing. <laughs> it's not missing anything. It's, it's, it has no, has no infection because wouldn't, when you say reintroduce, you're telling me it's not there. Those are your words, Kevin Warren, that you wrote merely eight days after the Big Ten season was canceled. So I'm just using your words, reintroduce infection. So if there's no infection, why is there no sports? Oh, because of the unknown. Good job. My follow-up question because it's safe to bring all these students back to campus, where would the infection come from? They're, they're going to be socially distanced in class. Where would, where would this infection come from, hypothetically? I mean, I don't, I don't understand. I'm, I'm, I'm so confused. It was safe to bring 30,000 students back to campus because they're going to be socially distanced in class. I don't, what, is, it, is, it, is it in the air? Is it getting sprayed out of airplanes? Where, where is it coming from? I don't understand. This, these students are, it's safe because there's 30,000 of them that are coming back and it's fine. But what, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't get it. Are, are we acknowledging that it might actually not be smart to bring students back because they're going to spread infection within the student body, obviously, because there's 30,000 of them and they're going to do dumb college kid stuff. Really? Oh, hmm. 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 And let me just throw this out there. I don't think Kevin Warren wrote this on his own. I'm going to guess this went through 
probably every single computer in the Big Ten legal office, probably a whole bunch of, there were probably some approval from some other folks at different schools, maybe. Um, you know, I mean, hey, I don't, I don't think this was just sort of tossed off. I don't, I think this was just, there's, this was probably something that was, was given some, a few by eyeballs looked at this. And, uh, you know, based on the fact that it has answers other than uncertainty, I'm going to guess some of those eyeballs were people other than Kevin Warren. So, you know, I mean, I guess we're acknowledging the fact that this could be a, an issue within the student body now, which, I mean, that's, that's interesting uh, at a time when you're bringing 30,000 students back to campus. Yeah, that's, that's a scary thought that there might be some, some of that. Uh, the, it goes on to say there's simply too much we do not know about the virus, Tom. Recovery from infection and longer term effects, while the data on cardiomyopathy is preliminary and incomplete, the uncertain risk was unacceptable at this time. The good news is, though, it will be acceptable by December when they can go to winter sports, you know, when, when they can move everything. So that is good to know that everything will be taken care of then. Again, uh, cardiomyopathy has been well known throughout the strength and conditioning programs for years. They're aware of it. And the fact that we are aware that COVID contributes to that now, the awareness is the key thing because now you can look for it. You can keep an eye on it. The, the next line, concerns surrounding contact tracing still exist, including the inability to social distance and contact sports pursuant to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention guidelines. Tom, the, again, if you don't have COVID, really like to see everybody with masks and stuff while they're being tested and, and assumed negative, it's kind of silly at that point. And that's why when they talked about when the helmets go on, the masks don't need to be on there any longer. This whole physical distancing, all of that, which the, the players, the athletes have all been doing, they've been getting watched. This is going on. This is happening. This is being successful. It's been done for two months. Why can it not be done any longer? Unless, of course, it is again, once again, because you brought in these zombies, these, these kids. Sorry, I don't want to call them zombies. They are students who do not have any viruses. These mm -hmm. safe students. If the football is safe and these students are safe, why are you citing on the unknowns when, you know, like, citing right now? Like, we might find, we all may come to the conclusion that, you know what, there's just the outbreaks are happening and whatnot. But right now, like everything is going as planned in the programs that are trying to play sports and to just be like, you know, I realize you guys are doing the physical distancing and all of this, but you know, all of this stuff requires physical distancing. So we just can't do it, but we've been doing it. <laughs> it's what's, what's interesting to me here is the disconnect between this and the, the way things are being treated here and the way things are being treated literally everywhere else in life. Everywhere else in life, it's, you know, here are the precautions you need to take. There are certain things that are just not possible, like not possible to do in these, you know, in ways that are safe. But everywhere else, it's just sort of a trade-off between, you know, what, what can we do to be safe and as safe as possible, manage our risk. You're, not, you're never going to get the risk to zero. So what are you going to do to manage the risk and keep yourself as safe as possible? And you know, that means like, yeah, when I go to the grocery store, I'm going to wear a mask. There, when we are practicing softball with my daughter's softball team, we're taking certain added precautions and spacing out more in the dugout and not high-fiving and all of that kind of stuff. And you could like, we're all balancing risk and, um, you know, risk and like regular life now and just trying to find a way to do it everything as safely as possible, but still do stuff. Like, if you want to keep everyone safe, take everyone, lock them in their houses for three weeks, don't let anyone leave, and then guess what? The, the virus rate will go to zero. But we don't want to do that, and there are reasons we don't want to do that. And so now we're just striking a balance with balancing the risk and the reward of, of whatever our daily activities are and how we can best manage that risk. And it's just the idea that, that you know, you, you can't, you know, if, if people are being tested, that manages the risk. If, you know, you don't, you don't have to, if, if I'm in a room full of people who have just been tested for COVID and have all tested negative, I'm going to feel reasonably confident that if the room has just been cleaned beforehand and all only people who have been tested negative for COVID in the last, you know, hour or day or whatever 
are there, I'm going to feel reasonably confident in that room, even if I'm indoors with those people for 45 minutes or an hour or three hours, because it's not coming out of nowhere. So, you know, you have to, you have to be able to manage risk versus reward on, on all of this stuff. And we are all doing it in our day to day lives, whether it's, you know, do I send my kid back to school or do I do online? You know, there are pros and cons to both of them. There's a heightened risk of one and there's, you know, social stuff that can come up with the other. It's just, we're, we're all doing this. So it's just ludicrous that the Big Ten somehow thinks this is just completely beyond the pale. The, um, the next line from Kevin Warren here that I'll point out, with the start of full contact practices and competitions, it became increasingly clear that contact tracing and quarantining would risk frequent and significant disruptions to the practice and competition calendar. Now that I, I agree, that's, that would, that's going to create an issue, but that's based on like, if you come into contact with somebody who's positive, you have to quarantine for 10 to 14 days and you can't test out of it. That to me is like an odd rule. Like that's from the CDC and it's like, well, why can't you test out of something? Like if, if you keep testing negative, why do you have to stay in quarantine? So yes, that is an issue. But this is also, you're, you're saying like, well, if that would happen, that would, would be bad. It would be hard to compete. Well, you've got 85 scholarship players. If you lose a couple of guys, we know that we, we went into this season scheduling bye weeks and be, going in knowing like we could push games if we need to. So this – to throw this out there is just like, well, let's also put that, that out there because, you know, th that's another thing. But they built this into the, into the protocols. They built this into the schedule. So I, I don't want to hear this complaint because you, we, we, we spent so much time, so many calls. We have this awesome schedule that can compartmentalize and we can move stuff around and we've got all of these open weeks and we can push stuff. And then, well, one of the reasons we canceled, uh, one of the reasons we postponed is because players might have to miss games. No crap, Sherlock. That's that's part of the, the the expectations this season. There's going to be some some bad bad times for some people that can't play. So rather than you know what, we don't want to see a situation where some guys sit out. So let's have everybody sit out. Yeah, I mean it's the uh, the micro version of the well. If one team can't play, no one can play thing. And I get it. Like th th that's a concern and it's a concern at every level of football. But right now the Ohio high school athletic association is still planning on playing football. You can play high school football in Ohio, the university of Cincinnati and FCS program. Now they're not power five. So I don't know, maybe their athletes are different. I don't know who's to say, but they, they can play football. The Browns and the Bengals. I mean, they're basically FCS quality. They're both playing football this year. So Again, why is the Big Ten different? You know, this is maybe this is going to turn out that the Big Ten is the only smart group in the in the country. But based on the messaging so far, it's going to be almost by sheer luck that <laughs> that it's true. That, they pulled that, a homer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's like the people on Twitter, and I'm definitely not verbally subtweeting anyone from this week um, as I say this. It's like the people on Twitter who throw something out there, and it's not necessarily based on anything in reality, but they're going to throw it out there. And if they're right, boy, how do you, are they going to let you know that you, they were right. And like, yes, there, there are, I'm sure there are actual doctors and actual white coats who are contributing to this process. But if they're not right, if people can play football successfully and the big 10 is the only one that has folded on this, like that if everyone is playing football, I think they've misread the risk reward here. If everyone is playing football and you are the only one who's not, you have, you have done some real serious damage to yourself. If everyone is playing football and you're just playing football with everyone else and you cancel, you know, at the same time, once, once there's sort of hard and fast information that, you know, it, it's a lot easier to go, look, literally everyone else is playing football. We're not the only ones who are doing this. This is not, this is not a decision that we're doing on our own. You've got, you've got some risk on the football side of things if you're the first one to scrap. You've got some risk on the liability end if you're the only one who's, you know, if the SEC is the only league that's playing this fall, and I mean, I don't think that's likely, but if they are, and everyone else has canceled, 
and they're just kind of plowing forward with it and you have issues, then you're going to have some real problems there. But like, I, I don't think either of us is saying they absolutely have to play football this fall. I think we have been very consistent for the last nine days. Like all you had to do was not punt on first down. Like just if it's fourth and six, like I'm going against some of uh, some of my uh, normal normal philosophies here. If it's fourth and six, go ahead and punt. You do not have to punt on second and seven. Like it just it's it, it was it was too early. Even if it ends up being the right decision, it was probably made too early because there was no indication that the, anyone was at any real risk right now at any of the schools where they were playing. And and if like I said, if a school can't do it, if Rutgers has 30 players test positive and they simply can't run a football program this fall, fine don't run a football program this fall. That's, that's completely okay. Yeah, completely agree. The next thing from Kevin Warren here, as we start to wind down, accurate and widely available rapid testing may help mitigate those concerns, but access to accurate tests is currently limited. Significant concerns also exist regarding the testing supply chain generally uh, for many of our institutions. Then uh, again, this is where the big 10 has dropped the ball. Like, Ohio State is doing just fine. As far as we know, getting all the tests. There was never any concerns about numbers of tests for Ohio State. We've never heard that. That was never a concern that, as, as Gene Smith wrote in his letter, like there's never uh, anything saying, you know, well, this, why we would have liked to have played, we were worried about running out of tests. You know, there's never been any of that expressed. Why isn't the Big Ten doing more to ease these concerns from these programs that, you know, th they can't get the tests. Why aren't they getting involved? Why aren't they, I don't know, leading the conference and making sure everybody, they do so much to make sure everybody has the same thing, except for during a pandemic when you're like, you know, I, maybe they're, all, they're you know, just making sure they have what they need on their walls. Uh, the fact that you're not like out there trying to get everybody on the same page, we know like from pr protocols, they're not trying to get on people on the same page. They could help in this way as well. They have a bunch of money. And as we know, if you have a bunch of money, you have access to anything you need, including tests and results. Accuracy being what it is. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's just part of, part of life right now with these tests, but you have access to all of that stuff. And these are uh, guidelines that have been laid from you know, CDC. Clearly it's working at the places implementing all of these tests at Ohio state. It's been working. Do more, do something, help out the programs that can't get to play rather than just being like, you know what? It's just, you know what? It's, it looks like it's just going to be too hard. It's too hard. So too hard for several programs. So again, and there are no barriers to eat these programs. So we're just going to have to just wait for them. Everybody, let's just go ahead and take 10. Take take the year off. T sorry. Take the fall off. Uh, we'll be back in the winter. Let's just take five. And uh, we'll, we'll reconvene in like December. Well, I mean, access to, to uh, accurate tests is currently limited. Well, okay, guess what? I, I, Ohio State did this, and I would assume pretty much every other Big Ten school did this. Thousands of students lined up to take tests before they moved into dorms. I mean, those, those, those tests are presumably as accurate as the ones the football players are taking. They had access to those, so okay, that's good. And you know, if, if you're worried about what could happen a month and a half from now, like significant concerns also exist regarding the testing supply chain generally for many of our institutions. Okay, when you run out of tests, that's a problem. We might run out of tests at some point in the future, like, Okay, I mean, when you run out of tests, that's when it's a problem. It's not a problem right now because you might not run out of tests. Like, y we can't play football this year due to concerns. Uh, you know, general, you know, significant concerns also exist regarding the Yellowstone super volcano erupting this year. Like, I don't know. It's a problem when it erupts. It's a problem when you're getting indications it's about to erupt. That that in and of itself is not a reason to kill the season. Like, come on, guys. It, th there are. There's a lot of this that reads like we came into this deciding that we can't do this. So here's our reasons that we're going to give you. And, and if you read through the list and think through it, I don't know if all of, you know, if you just read through and think just from a player safety standpoint, is this a reason to not play? And you really go through that list. 
I don't know that you're going to get a majority of, you know, medical experts who would agree with that. Maybe, maybe you would, but it just, it just seems like there's, there are very clear, obvious issues with a lot of this list that you just, you can't use this to justify the decision that they reached to scrap it on the day that, that playing another week would simply be too dangerous for the players on all of these teams. You, you could not have punted this week. You could not have punted this two weeks, three weeks. You, we have to, we have to punt right now on first down right now. We have to, we have to get the ball out because we, we simply, we, we can't, we can't risk another week of this. We can't risk another two weeks of this. We can't let this play out like literally everyone else at our level of the sport is doing it right now. So that's, uh, that's, that's the decision they made. And, you know, we'll, we'll see how this, we'll see how it plays out. And I mean, like I said, this could end up being the right decision. It could be, end up being what everyone does, but it, it is not a decision that needed to be made at the time that it was made. And nothing that they have put out in the last nine days has changed my mind on that. It would be like a first down punt in the snowball that gets muffed. And then you get the ball at the opponent's like seven yard line. Like you're punting and if everybody else cancels, then that the punt has been muffed and now you recovered and you don't look like such, uh, I wouldn't say idiot, but you don't look as foolish because now, Hey, you've got the ball of it's first and goal. Uh, but you can't do anything with it until maybe January. The, and, the and last... they, would, they would they would punt from the seven anyway. So <laughs> punt again. Maybe we can get a safety. <laughs> Gonna pin him inside the five. <laughs> the the last point that I have here is this last line, which is the final slap in the face from Kevin Warren to basically everybody who has uh, thoughts that the play could still happen here. We understand the passion of the many student athletes and their families who were disappointed by the decision, but also know there are many who have a great deal of concern and anxiety regarding the pandemic. This is saying that the parents, the players, the coaches that would like to try to play football don't have any anxiety, don't have any great concern about COVID-19 and the pandemic. And that is completely false because they have taken so many steps to mitigate the spread. They, when we you know, talked to Justin, Justin Fields talking to Good Morning America saying, asking students, you know, hey, just think about, think about more than yourself, you know, when you're out and, and please don't spread this. And so to think that the players who want so badly and the coaches who want so badly to have a season, that they don't have a great deal of concern and, and anxiety regarding the pandemic is false. It's insulting. It's, completely wrong and if if i was a family member or a a player or a coach i would take great issue with that because i've done everything i can because i do have these this great concern and i do have these anxieties about this coronavirus as we all do and it's like he's telling everybody you you're not you don't care about the right things you know you you are pretty much you're, you're you're a meathead you're just some you know idiot because there's a pandemic yeah we know and you are leading a sports uh, conglomerate and your job is to try to make sports happen but then when you one of your final statements is like well you know while a lot of people wanted this stuff other people actually think the virus is serious well well, some of you clods may think football is important I think, I think we, I don't know, I don't have an exact running timer here, but we've made it almost an hour before mentioning, hey, 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 guess what? Guess what Kevin Warren's kids doing this fall? Playing FBS football. So I'm unclear here. Is Kevin Warren uh, a deeply passionate person who is disappointed the season has been canceled? Or is he someone who is, um, you know, he has a great deal of concern and anxiety regarding the pandemic. Which, which, which camp does he fall in? Um, Cause that's, that, that seems unclear to me right now. Um, Cause if it's unsafe, I mean, all of, maybe, maybe this is one of these things like it doesn't, inf- it only affects student athletes. Maybe it only affects student athletes North of the Mason Dixon line. And that's oh. why they had to cancel. If you're South, if they had just moved the big 10 to the South, everything would have been fine. See, and, and really, you can't do that. You can't just uproot everybody. You, people mm-hmm. have families. You know, that, you, that was very selfish of me to suggest that, and I apologize. Yeah. I'd like to apologize to everyone in the Big Ten, uh, Commissioner Kevin Warren, 
Um, it was just, there was a lot of uncertainty uh, in the world uh, when I made that statement and that was selfish and I apologize. And uh, it, it won't happen again. I'm, uh, I'm not gonna cancel my appearances on this show, but I'm definitely gonna postpone my next appearance until the next time we record. So again, I, again, I apologize. I was, <laughs> someone just hit a home run. Oh, <laughs> oh that was... <sighs> Tony's giving me to keep talking because he's laughing too hard. Okay, good. Well, here we are. All right. Sh shall I wrap up the show or can you pull it together? No, I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, I think that'll do it for the show. I think that's a good ending point. I want to thank everybody for listening, for watching. We appreciate the, the constant support that you guys have given. We ask that you continue to read Buckeye Scoop. Check it out. Uh, if you're not a member, this is still a very good time to join because there is still quite a bit going on behind the scenes. And uh, we're always there chatting about talking on a message board. Tom, uh, how's the morning show going? I know uh, you had a guest there uh, just recently. Yes, I had a uh, Mr. Tony Gerderman on my show this morning on Morning Scoop. Uh, we talked not only about the Kevin Warren letter, but also talk, went into some detail on Gene Smith's uh, letter, his response to all of this. Um, and we should probably talk about that at some point when we're, when we're not spending an hour talking about mm -hmm. Kevin Warren. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we will have, uh, that will continue to be a daily show for, for now. And we'll, you know, we'll have more Buckeye talk. We have a ton of uh, really, really great contributors and uh, staff writers on that site. Um, lots of recruiting stuff to talk. And uh, I think tomorrow we're going to be talking to either you or Mark Givler from uh, lovely Illinois where, uh, hey, there's, there's going to be a little, uh, there's going to be a little demonstration there, a little peaceful protest from uh, Big Ten football families. I, this is, this ranks up there with one of the more intriguing, like, this could go any possible way. Like, I, I, this could be an hour of people standing outside and just sort of milling around and that'll be it. Or it could be a really angry group. It could lead to, at, you know, something really intriguing happening. It could lead to some sort of a face-to-face -face meeting. It could lead to absolutely nothing. I am fascinated to see what tomorrow looks like. And I'm uh, honestly a little bummed. Like of all these like stupid days that we have where we're standing in parking lots waiting for something to happen. Like this is one of those that's just like, you know, during the day it's going to be like, this is really annoying probably, but it's good. It's going to be a really interesting day to see what comes of it. And I'm kind of bummed. I'm not, not going to be there, but you and you and Mark Gifler will be there. So uh There'll be a bunch of that on Buckeye Scoop, and we'll uh, probably talk to one of you guys on the morning show for tomorrow. So find, uh, find the morning scoop and all of the great podcasts from Buckeye Scoop at uh, just search Buckeye Scoop on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, wherever your podcast platform of choices. And uh, while you're there, please leave us a rating and review on all of our shows. Those uh, help us uh, help other folks find these shows as well. You know, the hotel that we're staying at, I believe, is right next to the Big Ten office. So we could even just grab one of the Buckeye fans who are already camped out there for you to talk to. Mm, that'd be exciting. If you can, if you can properly socially distance, there might, there uh, may be too much uncertainty. <laughs> better punt, better punt. Uh, all right. Let's just call it a day. We've said enough. Um, we know when to quit. So thank you all for listening and we will talk to you guys later. <laughs>